okay so from unit one we had one portion remaining that was mental element intention motive and malice so these three topics are remaining that we will be doing today okay so vishnu did you read this part also unit one that you said no, no ma'am the remaining part you studied i know ma'am i didn't study it okay fine Right. So, mental element in law of torts. Okay, in criminal law, right, mental element is very much needed or very much relevant. Why? Because we are punishing the criminal. If you have done something wrong, your if your intentions were wrong, definitely we need to punish the person. We need to correct that person. And when you read different subjects, right, you will get another topic called as uh, theories of punishment. that basically explains why is it necessary to give punishment okay and the theories followed in india like there are basically five theories but the ones which are followed in india or prevalent in india are based on two concepts one is reformative we want to reform the person that means someone was having guilty mind we want to reform that person into a better human being we want to make him realize that yes i did something wrong and i should not be repeating it because otherwise i need to face serious consequences that's the first uh like the first objective why we give punishment second one is that we want to set it as an example secondly we want to set it as an example okay some issues with word secondly we want to set it as an example that yes this person did the wrong this is the consequence that he had to face if you are doing the same thing or anything like this you will also face similar consequences that means we want to set it as an example for other like minded people that this kind of a crime will lead to this sort of an outcome okay so that is the main objective why we give punishment in case of crime and their mental element is very much needed because if you were not having any bad intentions if you are already a good human being from your mind what will punishment do punishment will not do no good for you right so in case of criminal law mental element is mostly relevant in most of the cases it is relevant unless and until mental element is there it's not considered as a crime okay take for example if by mistake i was writing with your pen it might be i put my signature with your pen and by mistake i took it i thought it's my pen i took it along with me if i was not having any bad intention i have not committed the offense of theft because mental element is very much needed over there as we want to punish a person and we want to correct a person but if the person has not done anything wrong not done anything intentionally then there is no question or there is no use of providing punishment but the situation becomes completely different in case of torts what is the main aim of tort do we punish the person or what do we do main aim of punishment main aim of tort oh, what do we do why do we have torts do we provide punishment no. or what do we do no we do compensation yes compensation yes so mainly we provide compensation to the victims and because we provide compensation what is the main idea behind compensation that this person has suffered loss if he was at this stage because of the loss he came down to this stage and in tort we just want to provide him compensation because we cannot undo the loss undo the harm but we try to bring this person to the same level where he was by providing some amount of compensation that's the main reason like two days back i was saying that example of bad haircut leading to 2 crores compensation why that amount was given because whatever wrong is done with your hair with your scalp that's already being done but we just want to bring you to the 
same position where you were or where you would have been if the situation was not there okay so that's the main purpose in case of torts that we want to compensate to repair the loss repair the harm that means it does not matter whether mental element was present or not does not matter whether you did it intentionally or not what matters is the person suffered loss the person was at this stage, he came down to this stage. That is what matters. He has suffered loss. And we don't want to punish the accused person or anything. We just want to make this loss okay. That means mental element is not much relevant in case of torts because main aim is to provide compensation to the victim so that we can again bring him back to the same position. Okay, so that's the basic difference of mental element in tort as well as in crime. Because in crime, we want to punish. So mental element is very much needed. In tort, we want to repair the loss that a person has suffered. So it does not matter that much whether he suffered it because of your, in, with your intention or it was like completely unintentional. It does not matter that much. Okay. Now, based on intentions, there are some cases, there are some thoughts wherein, yes, mental element is relevant. Okay, it is relevant. So, on the basis of intention, thoughts can be divided into two broad categories. Intention, we know, right? The mode, the like the intention, what we have, right? That I want to do it because this is my intention. I want to write this exam because I want to get law degree right that's the intention i want to clear this exam this time itself because i don't want to carry uh, i uh, next year i won't be able to complete all these exams all these papers right that's your intention what you want to do on the basis of intention there are two different types of thoughts intentional thought and unintentional thought intentional thought is can result only from intentional act of wrongdoer that means I need to intend that, yes, I want to do this after that I'm committing a wrong. Okay, like we discussed these uh, specific thoughts, right? Battery, assault. Who remembers? What is assault? Renati Vishnu, who remembers? Assault. Assault is like, yeah, who remember? Um, yeah, like physically touching is not there, but then I'm creating such a gesture or something that I'll just kill you, I'll just hurt you or something like that. Okay, so assault as in if a person lifts its hand, like I'll slap you, that is assault. So here, it should be that intentional, right? I, I should intend that this person needs to be afraid of me, so I'm doing it, that I'll slap you. But it should not be that, you know, like I'm just stretching my hands like this and that. And the person thought I'm going to slap it. That should not be the case. That means in case of assault, intention is very much needed. I need to do it with an intention that this person should think that I am going to hurt him. Okay, so when I'm saying I'll slap you, it should be intentionally I'm doing it. Maybe I don't want, I don't intend to slap him, but then I want him to be afraid that any moment I can slap the person, okay? But if I'm simply might be stretching my hands or might be I was seeing just my fingers or something like this and the person thought maybe I'm going to slap it, that should not be the case, okay? Because otherwise also we may move our hands like here and there. That does not mean we are intending to kick someone, slap someone, right? So in these cases, it has to be intention. Similarly, battery means physically touching a person and hurting someone, like pulling a chair when a person is about to sit. The moment person falls, it becomes battery. There also it has to be intentional, right? Because take, for example, I am traveling somewhere, might be in train, which is like very crowded. And I need to, or might be in metro, okay? It's very crowded and I somehow need to get inside the metro. So maybe I, while moving, you know, like very fast, while moving very fast, maybe 
I pushed someone or something, right? Which was not intentional because I simply wanted to ensure that I'm carrying my luggage as well. I'm carrying my bag as well. So even if my hand touched another person or might be that person was carrying coffee or something, it just slipped. That person cannot make me liable because it was not an intentional act. It just happened because the place was so crowded. Okay, so those situations, it's very much needed that it has to be intentional. Same applies false imprisonment, wrongfully detaining a person inside somewhere. Okay, so there again, what happens? Intention becomes very important. And if you remember, I gave you one example of uh, a school where, like I said, that we had this as a lesson in our English chapter, that there was a kid who went to school and it was the day of summer vacation when vacations were to be announced and homeworks were to be given. Do you remember Vishnu? False imprisonment? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, what happened there? Ma'am, without knowing, uh, she was locked in that uh, classroom, ma'am. After that, uh, they came to know, so hmm. like without in intention, they have uh, closed the door, ma'am. Yes. So she was locked inside the washroom. Okay. So after classes were over, everybody left and the peon, he thought that might be everybody already left. So he was locking everything and he locked the washroom also from outside and she was inside there. But that means it was false imprisonment. She was confined within one room, but then it was not intentional. So when it's not intentional again, it will not be considered as a tort. Right. Similarly, intentional infliction of emotional distress. In intentionally, I'm trying to cause emotional distress to a person. So there definitely are some wrongs. There definitely are some thoughts wherein mental element or intention plays a part. OK, but it is not relevant in all the cases or it's not that important as in case of crime, we can say. OK, but yes, there are some intentional thoughts as well like these. Next is knowledge along with reasonable and substantial certainty that the act of the defendant shall produce a tortious result is sufficient to hold the harm. When I'm telling a person that I'll slap you, I know that this person will believe on the statement or maybe this person will be scared. And that is enough to constitute intentional thoughts. Okay, for example, if I'm pointing a gun to another person that I'll just shoot you, that person will be threatened. And that itself will be considered as assault and it falls under intentional thought. I knew that this person will be scared after seeing the gun. So when I say I'll, I'll shoot you, the person is scared and that becomes a, an intentional thought. That becomes assault. But maybe I am having a licensed gun with me, but maybe I'm a police officer, but then I'm in my casual wear. Okay, but I, I wanted to fix my pistol or something. I was just carrying it. I was just checking it. And another person thought that might be I'm a criminal. Why am I carrying a pistol? And that person was very scared that maybe I'm taking it out to kill that person. So over here, I did not intend it. Right? I did not intend anything, but I was busy with myself. This person only assumed something. So that is why intention becomes important in some cases. Okay, intention becomes very important in some of the cases that we need to do it. Okay, and one thing that happened with me itself, I guess some uh, Sikh people or Jains, they would carry sort of a knife, right, along with them. Do you know that? some knife or something they would carry, okay, in their west area. Yeah, this one. Okay, have you seen anybody carrying this? Yes, ma'am. You have seen where? Ma'am, like uh, in Pune, ma'am. In Pune, you have seen. Okay. So what happened, right? It was, we went to visit this uh, golden temple. Okay, so there we went with our entire family. And then there was a lady who came to us and she was talking very nicely to everyone. Okay, so I was very small that time. I was in school, I guess some four or five or something. I was in school and I did not know this thing that they carry knives along with them and it just followed as a ritual or as a custom. I was not aware of that. Okay, so she was talking very nicely and everything. 
and then i saw that she is carrying this knife in her waist area so i thought might be she is a criminal and she is being very nice and polite to us and then after that she will take out her knife and do something like that and then i called my sister and be like she she is carrying knife maybe we should uh, you know like we should not talk to her or something like that that means just because i was not aware that this is something that they do i got scared i thought that maybe she is having some bad intentions or something that does not mean she is doing anything wrong right i became scared because i was not aware that's not her problem it's my problem right so that is why it's sometimes right intention becomes important because otherwise people might be scared just like that and does that does not make a sense right so for jain people yes if somebody is not aware they might be scared but then that is not their problem so that means intentional thought is very important right in some cases intention becomes very important okay so that is why these are called as intentional thoughts without intention it will not be considered as thought okay so that lady who was talking to us she will not be held guilty for assault because she did not intend to threaten us or anything like that okay but then there are some thoughts which are called as unintentional unintentional as in without an intention also if you are doing something wrong you may be considered liable so unintentional thought the defendant causes injury to the plaintiff but without any malified or guilty intention i did not have any bad intention but still loss is being caused okay take for example in motor vehicles act we studied something about a strict liability and payment of compensation third party insurance and everything right so that means the main purpose of motor vehicles act is to provide compensation does not matter who was guilty who was not guilty in case permanent disablement or death is the result of an accident you will be held liable to pay that minimum compensation does not matter whether you were guilty whether you were negligent whether the other person was negligent whatever be the situation you will be held liable to pay that means in some thoughts if we start considering intention it will not have any sense it will not make any sense so in those cases without any intention also person can be held liable okay and one good example is those accidents taking place under motor vehicles act wherein a person is made strictly liable for example road accidents under motor vehicles act mostly they are inten unintentional and those may be considered as actionable party will be held liable even though intention is not present okay is this part clear yes ma'am so mental element as i said in case of tort it becomes relevant because we are trying to compensate the person okay so that that their uh, intention becomes relevant now what is motive first of all we discussed intention right so intention is like the uh intention and motive both are like mental elements only okay so what is motive motive means the ulterior uh, reason for the conduct it is different from intention which relates to the wrong itself so what is my motive my motive is to assault a person my motive is to threaten a person like my intention is to uh, threaten a person my intention is to assault a person but why do i even have that intention because my ultimate motive is this person so should not come to this place again okay so that is my ultimate motive like the main motive okay like take for example when we talk about crimes the intention is that i want to give poison and kill this person but motive is i want to kill this person so that this person you know like some benefit might be i'm getting okay i want to kill this person so that i can uh, get i can get his property all right so that i can get his uh, i can uh, get some things that he is using whatever might be the intention right what we see in movies why murders take take place or maybe my ultimate motive is to take revenge okay so intention is i want to kill this person by giving poison because i want to take revenge from him 
for something which had happened in the past okay so intention is like right now what you want to do motive is like ultimate okay right now you want to appear for your second semester exams why what is your motive you want to complete llb and after that maybe you want to become a magistrate you want to do your own private practice or whatsoever that's your motive final aim what you have and for that you are doing this small small steps you appeared for first semester exams you are going to appear for second semester exams these are your intentions okay so the motive for such publication take for example immediate intention is that i want to publish some false and derogatory statement some defamatory materials i want to publish that is intention but what is the motive? Why do I want to publish it? Because I want that this person should face departmental inquiry. Nobody should believe on him. And finally, this person should be suspended from his job. That means publication of defamatory materials, false defamatory materials is my intention. Why I want to do? Because I want that person to go through all the uh, trouble. Okay, so that will be my motive. Motive is not relevant to determine a person's liability in thoughts. It's not relevant what you want to ultimately do. But what is relevant is, yes, do we have the intention or not? That is very much relevant. Okay, Motive may help police officers to do their investigation or stuff. Okay, like in case of this crime series or stuff, you would see, right? Police officers would be like, okay, who killed this person? Who would have got any benefit if this person is killed? Like that, they want to understand. That means they want to understand what might be the motive of the criminal because of which they have done this crime. Okay, so similarly, it may be relevant. It might be helpful in investigation, but as such, making a person liable for that motive is not needed. Anything might be your motive, does not matter. But what was your intention? Was it wrongful intention? Was it with some bad intention, evil intention you did it? That is what is relevant to establish liability of a person. Okay, so here, whether you wanted a departmental inquiry against a person, whether you intended that this person should be suspended, those are not relevant. What is relevant is intentionally you published some false derogatory defamatory statements against a person that's important to make you liable under torts now malice in law and malice in fact Okay, now malice in law and malice in fact. Malice in law signifies a wrongful act, a wrong act, something which is not expected out of us, a wrongful act or omission which is done intentionally without just cause or excuse. I was not having valid enough reasons as to why I did something, but still I did it. For example, in an action for defamation, it can be mentioned that the alleged statement was published falsely and maliciously. Here, it simply means that the statement is false and is also made without lawful justification. Whoever published the statement, that person was not having valid enough reasons to believe on the statement. He was not valid, valid enough proofs to uh, like uh support his statement also but even then he published it without having a lawful justification he published some derogatory false statements referring to me that will be considered as malice in law he could not justify it because it was just a random statement that was made without any supporting evidences but what is malice in fact Malice in fact or evil malice or actual malice is an evil motive for wrongful act. When the defendant does a wrongful act with a feeling that I want to uh, vengeance or ill will or I want to take revenge from this person, 
the act will be considered that it is done maliciously. So malice in fact is yes, in fact, I was having bad intention. And why I had bad intention? Because that was my ultimate motive, that I wanted this person to be suspended from his job, suffer departmental inquiry and everything. That was the malice in fact. That was the intention or motive which I had. And in order to fulfill that, I published some defamatory, derogatory statements without valid enough reasons, without valid enough grounds. Okay, so that is the basic uh, difference between malice in law, malice in fact. Is this clear? Vishnu Pranati, is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Now, there is one uh, case that we will discuss, Town Area Committee versus Prabhu Dayal. It's a case of 1975, wherein the plaintiff made certain construction without complying with provisions of Uttar Pradesh Municipalities Act. In each of the states, there will be uh, state legislations which are applicable in that specific state. And those will specify guidelines, okay, that if you are having this plot of land, if you want to construct a house, you need to leave at least these, this much of space in each of the sites, okay, there are these sort of laws, then how many storage building you can construct, all of those uh, rules and regulations are being mentioned in those legislations. Similarly, in this case also, there was a legislation, Uttar Pradesh Municipalities Act, wherein some guidelines some rules and regulations were being mentioned and this town area committee they constructed some things without following the rules or guidelines mentioned in this act the defendants demolished the construction okay so this uh, the, the defendant demolished the construction the plaintiff sued defendants contending that demolition was illegal because some of the officers of this committee Right, they were having malicious intention. They were not having good intention. They ha they had may, might be to take revenge or something. They demolished a specific building. So that was the contention which was being done. Allahabad High Court held that because your construction itself was illegal, if that is being demolished, then that itself is like a rightful act only. Right, demolition of a building which is illegally constructed was perfectly lawful. The court did not investigate the question whether the act was done maliciously or not. And the same was considered irrelevant. That means intention is relevant. Motive is not relevant. Whether something is done with like a bad intention or something that is not relevant as such. Okay, it might be anything. It may be that, okay, fine. Those uh, officers, those officers were a little bit biased, but that is completely okay. Because even though they had some bad motive ultimately, but whatever they are doing at present, that is rightful. You only did unlawful construction, so they demolished it. And they are having statutory authority to do that also. right? So court is not going to unnecessarily investigate on what was the motive. Because what is right is anyways right, what is wrong is anyways wrong. So initial stage only they would say, not what was ultimate motive, who got benefited, how, all those things are mostly not relevant. Okay, is this part clear? Yes, ma'am. So mental element in thought, intention, motive, malice in law, malice in fact. Thank you.